In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. On this first Sunday of Lent, my brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Thanks be to God. Respond to Psalms. Your ways, Lord, are faithfulness and love for those who keep your covenant. Your ways, Lord, are faithfulness and love to those who keep your covenant. Lord, make me know your ways. Lord, teach me your path. Make me walk in your truth. And teach me that you are God my Saviour. Now, and which is not the 
function of the physical birth, but fled made to God in good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has entered heaven and is at God's right hand, now that he has made the angels of the nations and powers his subject. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to your Christ, King of eternal glory. Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Praise to your Christ, eternal glory. A reading from the Holy Traditionally, on the first Sunday of Lent, we hear the account of Jesus being tempted by the devil in the desert. But that account only exists in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. So in the when we hear the Gospel of Mark, that whole story is just one sentence. The Spirit drove Jesus out of the wilderness, and he remained there for forty days, and was tempted by Satan. Now the reason for this is that St. Mark wrote his Gospel in a rush. He wanted to get the story of Jesus out there as quickly as possible to as many people as possible, because at that time they thought that Jesus was going to come again very, very soon. So his gospel is very, very quick, very rushed. When you read the gospel of Mark, you have Jesus running around the whole of Israel as if it's Tesco. But reducing this whole story to a single sentence gives us an interesting insight into what Lent is all about. In the first reading we heard this morning, we meet Noah and his sons coming off the ark after the great flood. When the waters of the flood have gone down and the ark lands on dry, on dry land, God speaks to Noah and says to him, Now it is your duty to repopulate the earth. God had flooded the earth because humanity had gone so off, off the path that God just couldn't bring them back again. And so he just decided to destroy everything. And so as Noah and his family come off the ark, God says to him, now it is, it is up to you. You must repopulate the earth and you are responsible for making sure that this new humanity will go back. And so we have this God of second chances. We don't have a God who just says, right, that's it, you've gone wrong, I'm punishing you, that's it, forever. We have a God who says, no, you've gone wrong, but don't worry. We have a God who, whenever we fall, picks us up, dusts us off, 
and sends us on our way. And so that is what Lent is all about. Yes, Lent is preparing ourselves for the passion and death of Christ. But it's also preparing ourselves for his resurrection. Jesus doesn't just die and that's the end of it. He comes back from the dead. Because God is a God of second chances. And not just second chances, but third chances, fourth chances, fifth chances, however many chances we need every time we fall, God picks us up, dusts us up, and sends us on our way. And of course the way he does that is in the sacrament of reconciliation. Whenever we know we have fallen, we come to the Lord and we make re reparation. We repent of our sins. And every single time, no matter what we have done, every single time, He gives us His forgiveness. Just as He gave forgiveness to the whole of humanity after the flood. And so on Ash Wednesday we heard the words that we also heard in the Gospel today, repent and believe the good news. And these are not just words that we hear and move on, they are words we need to let sink within us. Repent and believe the good news. When we know we have done wrong, we come to the Lord and we say sorry to Him. But the good news is that He will forgive us. He will pick us up, dust us up, and send us on our way. So now let us stand and profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father of the the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one God, the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from the Lord, died from Christ, true God and the true God, begotten of faith. Through him all things were made. As man for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, was incarnate in the Virgin Mary and became man. Our Savior was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, according to the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one who will be captain of the apostolic church, and confess on baptism for the forgiveness of sins, as I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining forty long days from heavenly, from earthly food, he consecrated through his past the pattern of our Lenten observance, and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper is ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Alan our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. At the same as command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give ye, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord. Those who are joining us from home, we make an act of spiritual communion together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
that's his price. Renewed now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth, through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for the notices. First of all, I'd say a massive thank you to Paul who read for the first time today, did an amazing job, even if you tried to nick mine. Uh, but we are always on the lookout for readers. Um, we didn't produce a reader's rotor during the pandemic because the majority of our readers are unable to come to Mass for various reasons. For those of you who do are coming to Mass during the pandemic, if anybody would like to read at Mass, then speak to Katrina, who is hovering around over there. Uh, have a word with Katrina, uh, and she will uh, help you. As Lent has now well and truly begun, our usual Lenten events uh, will take place with obvious restrictions in place. So Stations of the Cross, uh, will only take place in one church. Uh, so Station of the Cross will be every Friday during Lent at 7 p.m. at Holy Trinity. Uh, we have our Lenten Healing Mass on the 13th of March. Uh, in Advent we had one in every church because we were expecting there to be so many people that we wouldn't be able to get them all into one church. But that wasn't the case, so we're only going to have the Healing Mass in one church. It will be on Saturday the 13th of March at 10am at Holy Trinity. You will have to book uh, and you must be over the age of 70 or have a serious uh, condition. Uh, we also having a Lenten Reconciliation Service. Again, we didn't have one in Advent because the restrictions around confession are so strict during the pandemic. Uh, but we will have one in Lent. However, it will only be live streamed. So there will be nobody physically present at it. Uh, but you will be able to join us live on Facebook. Uh, so that will be Tuesday the 16th of March at 7 o'clock, giving you just under a month to join Facebook and to send a friend request to the parish account. Cap of Lent Fast Day is this coming Friday the 26th of February. You will find a, uh, an envelope on your seat. Take that home with you, fulfil the usual fast day um, expectations, putting the money you save into the envelope and bring it back next weekend. Uh, however, if you would prefer safer ways of donating to Capo, <coughs> then you can do so either via their website or by text, and both of those are in the newsletter. Our suspension of weekday masses as the government are talking about looking at data rather than dates to bring us out of the current lockdown, we are going to do the same thing uh, to, uh, before we start looking at bringing weekday masses back. Uh, the Prime Minister, as you know, is making an announcement tomorrow, so we'll be watching that uh, with great interest. Uh, but we have extended the suspension of weekday masses to the first week of March and we will uh, review that uh, following uh, the Prime Minister's announcement tomorrow. There are no major feast days this week, so the only weekday mass uh, will, be, will be celebrated publicly will be this Saturday at 10am at Holy Trinity. I think we do have a few First Holy Communion families here with us today. Give me a wave if you're making your First Holy Communion. 
Excellent, fantastic. Make sure if you uh, have seen the video, uh, stay in your place and I will come and have a chat uh, in a few minutes time. So other than that, have a wonderful Sunday and a fabulous week, and I will see you again very soon. Please stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May bountiful blessing, O Lord, we pray, come down upon your people, that hope may grow in tribulation, Virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured through Christ our Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord.